Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this is a continuation in the series on central heating, and uh, today we've got this item here, which is actually uh, part of one of these motorised valves that we've looked at in previous episodes. Now, this is actually just the top piece. This is basically what actually opens and closes the valve, and then there's just the brass piece underneath, which has the two pipes attached to it. Now, I don't actually have that part, but uh, it's basically just a uh, simple valve that you rotate and it's obviously either open or closed. And this is the part that does actually the rotating. So uh, we'll have a look inside this one. And this is fairly typical of a design that's actually made by Drayton, but uh, other manufacturers, of course, are pretty much the same inside. Now, this particular one is actually defective because it only works uh, basically when it feels like it. And uh, it actually something is loose inside, as it's not supposed to rattle, and it does. So we'll uh, have a look at this one and see what's actually broken, and also see how they work. Now, so this is the top part of the uh, actual valve assembly, and this is the part that actually opens and closes it, and that's done via this uh, piece on the back here, and that fits over a metal piece on the valve body itself. And it's simply a question that in one position it's open, and then when rotated, it's uh, in the closed position. Uh, so we don't have that part here, but uh, so there's not really much to see there. It's simply a piece of uh, metal inside with a rubber piece on it, which uh, either blocks or doesn't block the pipework going through. Now this is a fairly old one, you see here one to expires 0306, so uh, it's sort of uh, 10 years old or so. And uh, this particular one's made by Drayton, it's ZA5, but so they're all fairly similar from the various different manufacturers. Now as is common with these, this is supplied with the flex already attached here. And this is a five core piece here. This white bit is just basically a filler to uh, keep the shape of the actual flex there. And we've got the green and yellow is the earth, neutral as the blue one, and then live as the, or line as the brown one there. And essentially when power is applied between these two wires, it will uh, power up the motor and open the valve. And when the valve gets to the open position, a switch is activated and that's actually connected between the gray and the orange wires here. So essentially when the valve is open, these two wires are connected together. And when it's not open, of course, they're not connected. And that's where you normally would switch on the boiler or whatever else you've got in the system. Now this particular one actually just clips onto the valve body, and let's see there's that sort of clip assembly there which just sort of snaps over the top so you can easily replace these. And so that's where the spindle will go in the centre there, that's actually the moving part. And then we've got this lever on the top which is actually for manual opening and closing. And on the side just got an indicator there between A and B, A being closed and B being open. Now this one actually rattles rather badly and uh, of course they're not supposed to do that, so something's obviously broken internally. So uh, let's uh, open it and see what's inside. Now the cover there, just a plastic cover, slots for ventilation, and it's just held on with that single screw, and the uh, tabs just fold over the top. Now essentially what we've got in here is a motor, which as I said on the top here is a 50 hertz motor of course for the UK, and this is what actually opens the valve. And again, you've got your wires coming in here, and the uh, blue and brown will basically go straight to the motor. And uh, this basically will turn, and uh, turns that little piece at the bottom, and that's what opens the valve. And when it gets to the end of its mechanical stop, it will still be powered, so it's just sort of uh, trying to continuously move. Of course, can't because of the mechanical part inside. And these get fairly warm. And it's quite common for the actual motors to fail on these, and you can actually buy the motor as a separate item, and then uh, sort of replace it in there if you so wanted to. And uh, when the power is disconnected, then there's a spring, which we'll see in the bottom in a moment, and that's what actually closes the valve back to its previous position. So we've got the actual motor here, and so this is the part you can actually buy as a separate item and replace. They're normally sort of about £15 or so, so if it was just the motor had failed, you could uh, just buy that. Simply uh, screw the new one in here, and then it's just connected by the two red wires there. Although a lot of the time it's just easier to buy the entire assembly, because normally if the motor's worn out, then it's fairly likely some of the other parts are going to be worn as well. Now the additional parts here, this is just a sort of folded sheet of what looks like aluminium. And underneath we have another plate here, and we've just got the earth connection going across to the side of that. And notice that's a fairly substantial piece of metal there, and uh, the motor output is just via this small piece here, and of course that fits through the plate like that, then goes on to this piece underneath. So this is what's inside, and so they're quite uh, simple devices. 
uh, we've got the uh, central spindle here and the whole thing uh, just pivots around that point and this is actually what goes through to the other side and if you look on the back there see they've got the hole and that's what fits over the valve to open and close it. So this is in the sort of default position which is closed and it's held there by these two springs, one on each side there. And we can use the manual lever there to move that. And you can see as it moves to the open position, it's moving against the springs, so they'll always pull it back to the closed position once the motor has been disconnected. And we can see the switch in here, just down at the bottom there, it's actually under that plate. See that little white uh, button there on the end, so as it moves around, so it just clicks the uh, switch in when it gets to the opened position. And again, here's the indicator on the outside, which is either the open or closed position, so you can just see the position from the outside of the valve. Now the motor here has this uh, little spindle which comes through this plate, and this actually acts correctly against this uh, toothed piece here, so uh, as the motor turned it's basically pulling this piece again in the same direction as the rest of the actual equipment there. So when the motor's on it's pulling it in this direction and the motor then stalls as it gets to the mechanical stop there. And of course uh, once it gets there it's going to hold there until the motor power is disconnected. Now these are designed to run uh, pretty much continuously, four and a half watts on this one, and of course it does mean they get fairly warm. And uh, so holding it there on the uh, mechanical stop is probably not ideal. There were some of these made where it had a uh, motor which would open it and then it used the uh, motor to actually close it as well. Theoretically a better design but uh, they're not common and the vast majority do work in this way with the motor acting against the spring. Now on this particular design we've got the manual lever here at the top which is just used to open it uh, when there's no power applied. Normally that's when installing the system so you can obviously fill it with water without having to apply power. And uh, note on this one you actually move the lever to there which is the open position and there is actually a sort of a notch on the side there you can obviously move it into that and it will lock into that position. But uh, on this particular design it only opens the valve partially because it only goes to that point there and those indicators sort of in the halfway position there whereas the motor will actually move it all the way across to the fully open position. So you've got that sort of extra bit of travel there, so uh, not entirely sure why they've done it like that, but uh, nevertheless, I mean, that's at least half open would certainly be sufficient for filling the system. And the connections inside, again, very straightforward. We've basically got the line and the neutral coming in there, and those basically go straight to the motor, just linked through these two terminal strips here. And so once you've got power there, the motor will be activated, and that will cause it to rotate. Just pulls against the metal piece there to open it. And then the other two wires are just connected directly to the switch, which you'll see underneath that plate there. And that's these uh, grey and brown wires here, or grey and orange wires rather, which just come out from the switch directly and back into the uh, flex there. And the only other connection is the earth, which is onto this metal plate, which again just sits over the uh, top of that on the two pegs there. So this is all earthed and then again that connects uh, onto the back of the motor as well, so of course earthing the entire thing. This piece here, which again just sits over the top there, is probably to uh, remove some of the heat from the motor. So just a bent piece of metal there to spread out the heat. And then you've also got this uh, cover with the slots in, obviously for ventilation. These do get fairly hot, eh? it's only four and a half watts, but uh, bearing in mind it's a fairly small piece, so uh, four and a half watts coming out of that is going to get reasonably hot. Now, so this one is actually uh, a bit uh, old and tired. The uh, motor does still work, but uh, quite often it doesn't actually open the valve at all. It needs a bit of a push just to uh, get it going in the correct direction. But uh, we'll connect up some power to this and see if it will actually rotate. So, of course, the motor is just the uh, three wires here, so we'll just connect those into the testing block here. And then when we switch on the power there we should see the little spindle of the motor rotating there. So let's go in a bit closer and uh, just have a look there. Yeah, so there you go, it's just uh, slowly rotating there. Now these valves are fairly slow to open, it's uh, many seconds, probably sort of five to ten seconds to open. And uh, closing again is uh, reasonably slow, although uh, again it's sort of five seconds or so to just the spring to pull it back. It also sort of making a horrible ticking noise which uh, certainly isn't uh, what it's supposed to be doing. 
but uh, nevertheless it does uh, appear to be rotating. So I've just put the motor back onto the base here and uh, we should be able to see that uh, the motor they'll open the valve here and we should see this little indicator here move across to the open position and also the uh, springs of course will uh, stretch along on both sides there. You can obviously see the other one that uh, as it moves around the spring should extend and we should see the manual lever here moving as well. So that's reached the uh, fully open position there and so the motor is no longer rotating but of course it's still connected to the power and therefore it's still uh, obviously producing a bit of heat inside and uh, notice the lever's now gone right across and actually sort of partly retracted due to that uh, sort of ob mechanism we saw in there before. And then if we disconnect the power then the spring should uh, pull it back the other way. So again we'll see that uh, just moving to the other position there. I see it sort of bounces a bit here because it's obviously somewhat worn. Now I'll just do that again from this uh, different angle so you can see better down the side there. And you can see the switch uh, just down in the bottom there with a little white button sticking out the side. So as the indicator gets to about the halfway position that uh, should be pressed in. Again as it comes back the other way that will then uh, click out. So a quick look there inside a typical uh, zone valve actuator and normally you can replace the uh, top part there of course when it uh, eventually wears out. So this particular one is uh, well over 10 years old so the warranty ran out in 2006 so of course it would have had uh, two or three years warranty on that and eventually it's just sort of worn out from use because bearing in mind every time your thermostat uh, clicks on and off that thing is going to be opening and closing. So uh, hardly surprising it's sort of worn out after 10 years. And other manufacturers of course are available but they're all very much the same inside, just the motor acting against the springs. So until next time, thanks for watching.